Hey guys, welcome back to the Super Kai Guy channel. Today, we're taking a look at some hidden features, tips and tricks, and things you may not have known about the BMW R9T, also known as the best modern retro-styled motorcycle roadster. Well, at least in my opinion. If you have been riding bikes for longer than I have been alive, or have had BMW bikes for a while, I'm sure you already know all of the items I'm gonna mention in this video. But hey, there might be one or two that you don't. If you are a pro though, I would love to hear some tips and tricks below in the comments so we can all learn something cool and new. For everyone else, stick around and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get to it. So what are some things that you may not know about this bike? Well, if you've owned a modern bike, you probably think that you can just turn off ABS or any other safety features with a button. But on the BMW R9T, you cannot turn off ABS unless you have the new version of the bike with throttle by wire. In this case, your bike will have traction control as well, and you can turn off both using the ASC button. You may not be able to turn off ABS, but did you know that this bike actually has an OBD2 port? I had no clue. It hides right here behind this little fairing. You can unscrew it, and then with a $15 adapter, they sell them on Amazon for like 15 bucks, and they seem to work pretty well. Uh, you can then scan the bike, you can see live data, and if you have a BMW software or a fancy motorcycle scanner, you can do even much, much more. Very cool. So we can read this bike's computer, but we can also plug in a dedicated GPS or a phone charger by using the onboard power socket that's hidden on the left side of the bike here under the tank. This is a DIN, I believe, D-I-N type connection. Uh, so it's not the same as a car power socket or a cigarette lighter, whatever you want to call it. This is different, but you can actually buy an adapter that's going to go from this to a regular sized one. Uh, but they also sell ones that directly plug into this and you will have USB and different kinds of connections as well. Pretty, pretty cool. Not a lot of bikes have this. Uh, but this socket is also protected just like on BMW cars where if the battery voltage falls below the level required to start the bike, it will be deactivated. I think that's a pretty nifty feature that will actually come in useful. If your battery does go below the required voltage at some point, you are in luck because this bike has a built-in trickle charger port. It's hidden right here behind the frame and you can just pull it out and zip tie it at the top so it doesn't go any further than it should it opens up just like this and you would plug in your trickle charger. It's just there. Pretty nice. You, you wouldn't really find it if you weren't looking for it, right? It's not very noticeable here in the back. But since BMW R9T uses AGM batteries, which can be a little tricky when it comes to charging, you have to follow some steps. You must leave your motorcycle on trickle charger over winter, if not riding, or the battery will be trashed by spring. In fact, this bike has had a new battery installed after only 800 miles because the previous owner left it over winter and the fact that it took two years to do that many miles. In fact, I have already done about that many miles in a few weeks that I have owned this bike. BMW also recommends to plug in the bike if not ridden for more than four weeks. Some additional notes on this, you cannot jumpstart the bike from this socket. The wires are not thick enough or rated for high current and can cause a fire. It's also recommended to use only this socket to charge as the onboard electronics monitor this socket and know when the battery is fully charged. And then switch off the onboard socket to make sure if you get a cheap battery tender or something like that, you won't fry your bike or the battery. If you'd like to charge your battery directly, you must first remove it and disconnect it from the bike. The next item on my list is the TPMS or the lack of TPMS sensors on this bike. This is, again, of course, because it's an old school kind of bike, so it's expected in a way, but make sure you check your tire pressure. When I picked up this bike and rode it home for the first time, I was wondering where was all this great handling that everyone has been talking about. The bike kept trying to stand up and it was slow through turns. It just didn't feel right. So the 15 pounds of pressure that it was missing from its tires made a huge difference. And now, of course, the bike is very confident on the road and the difference is amazing. But I didn't know. I was expecting to at least get a light or something telling you that, hey, there's, you know, low pressure in your tires. That's what I'm used to with pretty much all the cars and I know most of the modern bikes have them as well. But since this bike has spokes, you can't have TPMS sensors. 
who would have thought? I know, I know, I know there are some wheels now that have the spokes on the sides and stuff and you can have the sensors in there, but this one does not. So of course this is a little bit Motorcycles 101, but there's no dummy light here. So don't be a dummy like me and make sure you check the pressure manually and write on correct pressure in your tires. It's also important for your safety. Speaking of dummy lights, that's the only way you will know if you are low on fuel. There is no fuel gauge on this bike, so you will be only informed once you are on reserve. So make sure you kind of pay attention to your mileage and how much you can get on the tank. Don't get somewhere out there and get left stranded. Number seven is a parking light. This is pretty common in Europe as far as I understand, but pretty rare on bikes in the States. To turn it on, switch off the ignition. So I just switch the ignition off and pull the key out and then immediately hold the indicator switch to the left. I'm holding it right now until the lights come on. So it came on right there. Now my ignition is off, the key is out and my headlight, well that low light in there and a light in the tail light are both on. To turn this off, you take your key, you put it into ignition, turn on the ignition and then turn it off. So basically cycle the ignition and it goes off. Now you can leave with the key and all the lights are gonna be off as well. Pretty nifty little feature, who knew? A feature that surprised me on this bike was actually the auto cancel indicator switch. If you forget to turn it off, it will automatically turn itself off after 10 seconds or 300 meters, which is about a thousand feet or so of driving the bike. It doesn't work if you're just standing, so I can't show it to you right now, but I'll try to take it on a ride and see if we can capture it on camera. Now, of course, if you use the parking light too much or you leave the ignition on or a combination of both or something happens to your battery and you cannot start the bike, you will have to jump start your motorcycle, right? Uh, unfortunately, you cannot use any of the connections that I have shown you so far to jump start the bike. What you have to use is the connection port on the positive battery terminal under the seat and the negative terminal on the right side cylinder. Now, the seat on this bike does not just open up like on some bikes, so it has to be removed. Luckily, you only have to remove one screw in order to remove both seats, the passenger seat in the back, as well as the main rider's seat in the front. Your bike should come with a key uh, for this screw in the back. I got mine used, so I don't have the actual key, so I have to use an actual socket but the replacement is on the way. And then you would just connect it to a car's battery or another motorcycle and get it jump started. The last thing you may not have known about this bike is that you can remove the baffles inside the exhaust right here, known as the DB killers, to improve the depth of the exhaust sound. It only takes five minutes and is very easy to do. I have a video on how to do this exactly if you'd like to check it out. It's also easily reversible if you don't like it, but here's what it sounds like. Now that we have looked into a few things that you may not have known about your bike, there are a few things that you should know about the bike and that's how to check your fluids. I feel like it's even more important on a motorcycle than it would be on a car. As an example, to check the oil, you have to make sure that the bike is warmed up and on leveled surface and hold it vertically, just like I am holding it right now. Then you have to wait five minutes and you can check in the little window here in the oil sump below. It should be between the minimum, so the bottom of the window and the maximum, which is at the top. This and much more can be found in the manual. You know, people complain that manuals nowadays only have stuff like don't drink the battery fluid, the content of the battery fluids and stuff like that. But that's not really true. The manual for this bike is actually really, really useful. You can even learn how to remove and reinstall front and rear wheels. Speaking of wheels and tires, this motorcycle has a quick release front axle. Who knew such thing even existed? I sure didn't. I was also very surprised that a modern bike like this, although styled like a retro bike, uh, would still be using tube tires. I mean, this bike has a tube tire, who knew? Uh, it's just like on my 1976 Honda CB360 that's, you know, 50 years old at this point. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, and I really hope you learned something new or at least found it interesting. 
I would love to hear your opinions or you know, hear about the features that I have missed or I don't know about down below in the comments. If you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be happy to see you in the next one.